series in the book of Galatians kung saan ang pinaka overarching theme or topic ay about the freedom in Christ. O sa Tagalog yung kalayaang nasumpungan po natin sa ating mong Panginoong Heso Christ. Okay. Just a simple recap doon po sa first part, ating pong tinalakay yung uh, subtopic 
with the main topic, Freedom in Christ, kung saan ating pong uh, pinaliwanag how we have been set free by Christ. Paano po tayo tunay ang pinalaya ng ating pong Panginoong Heso Kristo? We learn in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 that says, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. Okay. Sa mga talatang ito, we have been set free by Christ through His crucifixion. Tayo po ay napalaya ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng pagkapako po niya sa krus ng Kalbaryo para po sa bawat isa po sa atin. Ating din pong tinunghayan ang mga talatang tatlo, labing tatlo hanggang labing apat ng kabanatang tatlo ng Book of Galatians that says, Christ, redeem us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeem us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Okay? Mula po sa mga talatang ito, naintindihan po natin that we have been set free by Christ through His redemption. Sa pagtutubos ng Panginoon sa Kristo, tayo po ay nakasuntong ng kalayaan. And on the recap for the second part, in which aspect that Christ has liberated us? Sa anong lugar at aspeto? Tayo po ay pinalaya ng Panginoon by His crucifixion and by His redemption. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 says, Know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. In the aspect and in the area, Christ liberated us in this, that we have new life for Christ that set us free from the bondage of sin. Pinalaya tayo sa aspeto at lugar ng panibagong buhay dahil pinalaya tayo doon sa pagkat, pagkatali ng kasalanan sa ating pong mga buhay. We are also declared righteous before God for Christ has set us free from the penalty of sin. Tayo po ay sa area at aspect ng pagpapalaya, ibig sabihin matuwid na tayo sa harapan po ng Diyos yun po ang declaration because from the penalty of sin tayo po ay napalaya in, in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 to 7 it says, but when the set time had fully come, God set His Son, born of a woman born under the law to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship because you are His sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into your hearts. The Spirit who calls you Abba Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are His child, God has made you also an heir. Mula po dito, sa area and aspect na tayo pinalaya ng Panginoon, Christ has released us from the power of the law. Wala na tayo sa jurisdiction o kapangyarihan hindi na tayo sumas ilalim sa mga batas ng Diyos upang tayo matuwid. Sapagkat tayo ay naging matuwid sa harapan ng Diyos pinalaya dahil kay Kristo. Furthermore, Christ has liberated us from alienation to become God's children and inheritor. Dati tayo po hindi kabilang, hindi bahagi ng kaharian ng Diyos. Pero ngayon tayo kabahagi ng kaharian ng Diyos, malaya na tayo at ginawa pa tayong mga tagapagmana. Furthermore, Christ has set us free from the emptiness to be filled with the Holy Spirit, another area and aspect kung saan pinalaya po tayo ng Panginoon. Wala na po tayo, ikaw na po ay emptiness. Dahil before, wala po tayong manifesting presence of the Lord and the Spirit has not resided unto us but because we are being set free, we are now filled with the presence of God. We are filled with the Spirit of the Lord. 
Now we're going to proceed with the last part. Can we fall away from our freedom in Christ? We learn that Christ will keep us and crucified for our freedom. At tinalakay po natin yung iba't ibang area and aspect how we have been set free by Christ. We are now righteous, forgiven, set free from the power and penalty of sin and the law. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the third topic of the freedom in Christ that we are exploring in the book of Galatians. Can we fall away from our freedom in Christ? Maari ba tayong lumayo o tumalikod sa ating pong kalayaan na nagmumula sa ating Panginoon? Maari ba tayong natin maiwala ang ating kalayaan na kaptan mula sa ating Panginoon sa Kristo? Can we fall away from our freedom in Christ? Let's watch this short video presentation at i-play ko sa atin. The prisoner wishes to say a word. So yung pinanood po natin video clip, galing po yun doon sa movie The Brave Heart na pinagbidahan po ni Mel Gibson. In the movie, pangalan po niya ay si William Wallace. Nahuli po siya sapagkat siya po ang uh, nanguna doon po sa pinatawag na uh, revolution upang maging malaya yung kanyang bansa under the Indian power. So nung nahuli po siya, he was being tortured at pinapahirapan po siya, unti-unti po siyang pinahihirapan hanggang sa piti niya yung kamatayan. So how painful to be tortured and suffer ng mga tayo na yun. Ngayon, kung isisigaw niya mercy, na para bang humihihi siya ng patawad at kagandahan loob mula sa king, eh mapapabilis na po yung kanyang tinatawad na paghihirap. Pero instead of shouting mercy, From the bottom of his heart, he shouted the word freedom. Mas tinili po niya yung sabihin kalayaan kesa po yung kagandahan loob upang matigil na yung kanyang paghihirap. Upang ipamalas po sa movie na yun na gano kaimportante, gano kahalaga ang kalayaan sa ating pong mga buhay. Now, when we think of our freedom in Christ, don't you know that our freedom in Christ is so priceless, so expensive, hindi po cheap, hindi po mumurahin, hindi po ordinaryo ang ipinagkaloob na kalayaan sa atin ng ating pong Panginoon sa Christo. The freedom that we have in Christ is so expensive and it is so priceless dahil kinakailangan na magplano ang Diyos. And in the plan of God, kailangan niyang isubo ang kanyang buktong na anak, walang iba kundi ang ating Panginoong sa Kristo, upang maparito po sa lupa. So, the freedom that we have in Christ is so expensive that requires the plan of God to send His beloved Son here on earth. The freedom that we have in Christ is so priceless and it's so expensive, expensive dahil kinakailangan ang Panginoong sa Kristo ay iwan ang kanyang kaluwalatian sa langit, magkatawang lupa upang maging alipin to suffer and die on the cross. That's how expensive, that's how costly our freedom 
in the Lord. Now, when we understand how precious, how costly, how priceless and expensive the freedom that we have in Christ, ito po ba ay babaliwalain po natin? When we realize how expensive and priceless our freedom in Christ, pababayaan po ba natin ang ating kalayaan kay Christ? When we realize how costly and precious our freedom in Christ, ito po ba ay mamaliitin po natin? When we understand how priceless and expensive our freedom in Christ, ito po ba ay iwawala po natin? When we realize how precious and costly our freedom in Christ, hindi po ba natin siseryosohin ang ating pong kalayaan sa ating pong Panginoon sa Christ? Listen carefully. Kayo po na nandito sa ating pong onsite. You who are watching on the online, take this warning. Maari po ba nating maiwala? Maari ba tayong tumalikod sa ating pong kalayaan sa Panginoon? You know the answer is, it is always possible. It's a warning. Can we fall away from our freedom in Christ? Can we lose our freedom in Christ? It is always a possibility. That's why the Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians warned us, maari natin mabaliwala, maiwala ang ating kalayaan sa ating Panginoong Heso Christo. There's a great quote by Chuck Swindoll that says, Christ breaks the dominion. He stops the chain. He cuts the rope. He sets you free. Kaya napaka-expensive, napaka-priceless, napaka-precious ng ating kalayaan sa ating Panginoon. And we are being reminded, though it is precious and priceless, you and I can turn away and backslide from our freedom. We can lose our freedom. Ano-ano ang mga babala ng Book of Galatians? that the possibility to turn away and lose our freedom would always be there. Kaya, babala. <laughs> Asawa ni babalo. <laughs> okay. Listen carefully. Here is the first warning. Okay. Do not turn away from the true gospel in which freedom in Christ alone declares. Okay. Ito po ang unang babala. Huwag tayong lumayo sa mabuting balita na kay Kristo lamang ang tunay na kalayaan. Allow me to repeat the first warning. Do not turn away from the true gospel in which freedom in Christ alone declares. Ito po ang babala na sinasabi po ni Apostol Pablo. Uulitin ko, huwag tayong lumayo sa mabuting balita kay Kristo sapagkat siya lamang po ang may tunay na akda ng ating pong kalayaan. Let's read Galatians 1, 6-8, 6 to 8 that says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. Okay? Looking at the context and the background, alam po ninyo, in one of the missionary journey of Paul, napunta po siya sa lugar ng Galatia. And he did some mission, discipleship, and ministry sa lugar po ng Galatia. At ito po ay nagresulta kung saan nagkaroon po ng simbahan sa lugar po ng Galatia. So a church has been produced by the discipleship, by the mission, and evangelism by Paul and his companion in Galatia. Ngayon, sa paglipas po ng maraming panahon, may mga dumayo din sa lugar ng Galatia kung saan meron na pong church sa mga panahon po ngayon. At ang mga tao itong dumayo po sa Galatia, sila po ay nangaral ng ibang mabuting balita. They had perverted 
the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They teaches, they taught different gospel from the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kanila pong binaluktot ang gospel of Jesus. Kaya nagkaroon ng kalituhan ang simbahan sa Galatia nung mga panahon po yun. Dahil po dito sa mga dumayo na nagtuturo ng fake gospel. <laughs> Ngayon, nagulat po si Apostol Pablo. Doon sa mga report at ulat na nakangarating sa kanya, na tila baga napakabilis naman na itong mga Christians at Galatia siya po ay ilaglag bilang their father in the faith at na, nagsisimula po silang yakapin yung ibang gospel na una nilang narinig which is the true gospel nagulat po si Paul ang pilis nyo naman ako ay talikuran at iwanan ninyo ang totoong gospel kaya po nagalit po si Apostol Pablo sa kanya pong sulat sa ating pong pagkabasa sa kanyang pagkagalit, ang sabi po niya, sige kayo. Alam ba ninyo, kahit may tao, sino mang tao, o anghel galing sa langit, na bumaba dito sa lupa, na magtuturo ng ibang gospel, other than the gospel of Jesus, sa po ay, o sila po ay, dapat, sumpain. In chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, sabi ni Pablo, totoo yung gospel na tinuturo ko sa inyo dahil hindi ito galing sa tao. It was not man-made, but it was revealed by Jesus Himself unto me. The gospel that I'm preaching to you came from the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya ito ang genuine, ito ang totoo at original na gospel. Now, ang tanong, ano nga ba ang gospel? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, ito po ang pinakabuod ng gospel, the true gospel, where we embrace and accept that resulted to our own freedom. It says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. Ito po yung gospel. For I be delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures ito yung true gospel ito ang totoong mabuting balita na si Cristo ay naparito sa lupa nag-alay ng buhay para sa ating kalintasan na matay at muling na buhay this is the true gospel By the death and the resurrection of Christ, we have been set free. This is the gospel. Kaya sino man ang magtuturo at manangaral ng ibang gospel other than this, be eternally condemned, sabi po ni Paul. Even if an angel came from heaven down here on earth, teaches different gospel, aside from this gospel, let that angel be eternally condemned. Malaki ang itinulot ng paglaas ng social media sa ating pong kapanahonan, tama? Napaka-easy access na ng iba-ibang information sa social media. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you can search the Google, something like that. Di po ba? Pero the problem is, naglipa na din ang mga fake news sa social media, tama po ba? ang dami-dami ang verified news at the social media. Kaya nga, ang mga big tech, naglalagay po sila ng mga pag-filter, pag-sensor, or they even block kapag ka po merong nag-post o merong po nagbabahagi po ng mga fake news. Tama? Ngayon, hindi lahat ng naririnig, nababasa, napapanood po natin sa social media, ay ika nga po ibabahagi na natin at ito po ay tatanggapin na po natin. We have to be reminded and warned na maraming fake news in the social media. Kaya nga po, it is our responsibility. We have to have what we call due diligence sa ating pong pag-filter 
pag-sensor ng mga news that we are receiving in the social media. Okay? In the same manner, when you tune in sa AM radio, when you turn on your TV, when you search YouTube, go to the social media, ang dami-daming mga preacher sharing and communicating a certain gospel. Now, kailangan po natin isensor at i-filter po yun. Baka mamaya, yung naririnig natin gospel sa TV, naririnig po natin sa radio, na napapanood po natin sa social media, ay fake gospel na pala. We have to be responsible and apply due diligence upang hindi po tayo ika na po ay ma masway of different gospel. Because we are being warned we are being warned by Paul. Don't turn away from the true gospel. Because the moment we turn away from the true gospel and we begin to embrace fake gospel, we are turning away from our freedom in Christ. Okay? The second warning is this. Do not turn away from the faith-based freedom in Christ. Ito po ang pangalawang babala sa atin. Huwag tayong lumayo na sa pananampalataya sa Panginoon, tayo po ay napalaya. Our freedom in Christ ay bunga ng ating pananampalataya kay Kristo. Huwag tayong magpabudol-budol na ang kalayaan kay Kristo ay isang bagay na iyong pagsisikapan, isang bagay na tatrabahuhin mo. The Bible is so clear that our freedom in Christ is always faith-based. Si Kristo ang nagpalaya sa atin at yun ang pinanampalatayanan natin. We did not work it out. It is not based on our merit, on our freedom, but it is by faith that we accept our freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Galatians 3, verse 1 to 3, you fellows Galatians, who was bewitched you before your very eyes. Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you have heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Chapter 3, verse 23 to 25 of Galatians says, Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that, that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. Listen carefully. Binibigyang din ni Apostol Pablo to be righteous. Ibig sabihin, freedom from being a sinner. Freedom of being condemned ay sa pananampalataya sa pagtutubos ng ating Panginoong sa Kristo. Again, let me repeat, we are justified by works or by faith. By faith. We are declared no longer sinners in the sight of God. We are forgiven of the power and penalty of sin. Because tinrabaho po ba natin o pinanampalatayanan natin ang Panginoong sa Kristo. That's why Paul says, I live by faith in the Son of God. Hindi po niya sinabi, I live by works in the Son of God. That's why I am justified. Pero binigyan din po niya, sa pananampalataya kay Kristo, siya ay pinapaging patuwid. Binigyan din din ni Apostol Pablo to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yung mapuspos ng Banala Spirito, mapuspos ng presensya ng Diyos sa kanyang buhay ay sa paniniwala sa pagligtas ng Panginoon. He was filled with the Spirit. We are filled with the presence of God by faith. Hindi po natin tinrabaho. Hindi po ito paghuya po sa ating dahil tayo po ay nagtatapat sa Panginoon. That's why he asked, Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law? 
or by believing what you have heard. Ano ba naman kayo, mga Galatians? Sinong bumudol-budol sa inyo? Sino ang nag-deceive sa inyo? Did you, did you receive the Spirit of God in your fellowship, in your being, dahil sa paggawa o dahil sa pananampalataya? Remember, nung antitito pa po ang law prior to the coming of the promise of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, nakatali tayo sa batas. Pero when Christ came as a promise, hindi na tayo nakatali po sa mga paggawa. Sa mga, sa mga gagawin po natin paghakbang, pagsisikap, upang tayo po'y maging matuwid at mapuspos ng presensya ng Diyos. Because Christ came here on earth and He died on the cross, we are no longer held custody with the law, but we are set free, liberated by our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we ask this question. We are free and justified, meaning forgiven and righteous. By works or by faith? The answer is, by faith. Kaya maging katulad po tayo ni Abraham to be a man of faith. We ask this question, are we free and filled by the Holy Spirit? By works or by faith? Maliwanan po ang kasagutan po dito. It is by faith. We are like we are like Sarah, woman of the covenant, woman of the promise. We are no longer like like the woman Hagar. Na ito po, siya po ay slave at siya po ay servant. In other words, we are justified by faith. We are filled by the Spirit by faith. Hindi po natin terabaw. Hindi po tayo sumunod sa batas. Kaya po tayo nag-justify o napuspos ng Holy Spirit. It is clear by faith. Kaya ang babala sa atin, kung lalayo tayo sa pananampalataya at babalik tayo sa pagkilos, pagsunod sa batas, mawawala tayo sa kalayaan kay Kristo. When we turn away from faith-based foundation of our freedom in Christ, we will lose our freedom in Christ. Sapagkat hindi tayo makakasumpong ng tunay na kalayaan sa paggawa at pagtupad ng batas sa pananampalataya kay Kristo. Amen. We are free in Christ. Therefore, we set our faith in Christ. We cannot work out our freedom. We cannot gain our freedom. Freedom is grace. Freedom is gift. Freedom is coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we receive it by faith. Sa parang palataya, noong pong June 25, online recognition po ng Trinity University of Asia. At tuwang-tuwa po kami dahil si Jeb po ay Silver Medalist Awardee. Ang achiever itong si Jeb. Okay. Now, Silver medalist achiever itong si Jen. Siyempre, pinaghirapan niya, pinagsikapan niya, talagang nagtsaga sa online classes niya. As a result, he will be recognized and rewarded as silver medalist honor achiever. Pero sa usapin po ng ating kalayaan kay Kristo, hindi natin pagtatrabahuhan yun. Hindi natin pagsisikapan yun. Hindi po natin bibilhin yun. Simple lang, pananang palatayanan po natin ito. Amen? Faith in Christ leads to freedom. At kapag lumayo ka doon sa katotohanan yun, ilalaglag din pananang palataya mo at sisimulan ng trabahuhin at sumunod sa mga legalistic way para ikaw ay maging malaya kay Kristo, you will lose that freedom that you have in faith in Christ. Maliwanag po yun. And here's the third warning. Okay? Do not neglect your freedom in Christ. Are you listening? Dito sa mga on-site people, you who are watching on the online, ito po ang babala. Huwag natin binabaliwala ang ating kalayaan ng naso po ng Ketos. Do not neglect your freedom in Christ. Huwag na hindi po natin papahalagahan, iingatan ang ating pong kalayaan kay Kristo. Minsan tayo mga Kristiyano, we lower our guard to protect our freedom in Christ. We begin to belittle 
we begin to neglect na outfocus na po tayo to protect and to explore and to take advantage of our freedom in Christ. Paul warns us, if you neglect your freedom in Christ, pababayaan mo ito. Kung ito ay hindi mo bibigyan ng importansya. If you won't prioritize and put essentiality to your freedom, baka mawala ang epekto ng kalayaan mo sa ating Panginoon. That's why Paul says, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, 13 and 16, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Paul says, Stand firm to your freedom then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. Wag mong inigleg ang iyong kalayaan kay Kristo. Listen carefully. We have to stand for our freedom. Kailangan po natin tayuan ang ating kalayaan kay Kristo. Huwag nating isuko ang ating kalayaan mula po sa ating Panginoon. Take this illustration. Kung wala ka pa kay Kristo, parang ka naka-quarantine. <laughs> Pero ngayong kabilang ka na kay Kristo, napalaya ka na. Magpapakulong ka ba ulit? Stand fear with your freedom. Huwag mong isuko Huwag mong pabayaan ang kalayaan mo kay Kristo. Paul also says, don't be sleep again. Ipaglaban mo ang kalayaan mo kay Kristo. Huwag mong hayaan ikaw ay muling maging alipin. Fight for your freedom. Not just stand for your freedom in Christ. Fight for your freedom. Take this illustration. Nung wala ka pa kay Kristo, parang mga kamay mo ay nakagapos at nakatali. But because you have been in Christ, yung pagkatali ng mga kamay mo, yung pagkagapos ng mga kamay po natin, ito po ay napawala niya. Magpapatali ka pa ulit. Fight for your freedom. Don't be slave again, but fight for your freedom. Also, sinasabi po sa atin, we keep on with our freedom in Christ. We keep on with our freedom in Christ. Nagpapatuli tayo sa karera ng na pinalaya tayo ng ating Panginoon. Don't stop in running the risk of your freedom until Christ return. Keep on, my friend. Press on. Run on with the freedom that you have in Christ. Itagdag pa natin, Paul says, you live by the Spirit. Mamuhay ka sa banal na Spirito because the Spirit that resides in you set you free. Kaya patuloy kang mamuhay sa Spirito. Don't live by your sinful desires. Sapagkat kung mamumuhay ka ulit sa sinful desires, hindi pa pinalaya ka na dyan. Gusto mo bang maalipin ka ulit? That's why we are being encouraged here, live by the Spirit who sets you free. Huwag ka nang mamuhay sa sinful nature mo. You have been set free from your sinful nature. Do you want to be slain again? And the freedom that we have, anong gagawin po natin dito? How do we take advantage of our freedom in Christ? It's crystal clear. Use your freedom in Christ to glorify God. Use your freedom in Christ to serve people. Gamitin mo ang kalayaan mo sa kalawalatian ng Panginoon at sa pagliling ko sa ating pong mga kapwa. Pinalad ko po ulit yung movie ng National Treasure. So sa pagkakap po nila ng treasure, isa po sa dapat po nilang makita at malaman para makakuha po ng clue of him, eh, pupunta po sila doon sa Statue of Liberty doon po sa Paris, France. Akala ko ang Statue of Liberty nasa New York lang. Meron din pala sa Paris, France. Amen. Okay. Now, itinayo po a century ago yung Statue of Liberty sapagkat yun po ang symbol of the free world. Yun ang imahe at larawan ng malayang mundo, malayang sangkatuan. 
Pag nakita po natin yung cross, yan po ang eternal image of our eternal freedom in Christ. We celebrate our freedom in Christ. We live by our freedom in Christ. We stay with our freedom in Christ. Purihin po ang ating mga Panginoon. Praise God. Let us pray. Salamat Panginoon na kami ay nakasumpong ng kalayaan. na nagbumula po sa inyo, Panginoon Yesus. Sa pananampalataya po namin, kami ay naging malaya sa inyong pagtutubos, sa inyong sakripisyo. Kami ay malaya ng lubos. Malaya sa kasalanan mo. Malaya sa kadili mo. Malaya sa pagkapanikala at pagkagapos. Malayang malaya kami, Panginoon. Puspos ng spirito. Wala na sa ilalim ng batas. Matuwid at pinatawad. Inaring mga anak mo at tagapagmana. Ito ang aming kalayaan. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, na kami ay patuloy na mag-ingat sa aming kalayaan kay Kristo. Manatili sa katotohanan ng aming kalayaan kay Kristo. Magpatuloy sa kalayaan po namin. Kay Kristo. Panginoon, tinataas po namin sa inyo ang aming pong mga buhay. Maybe some of our, us are sick right now. We pray for your healing touch from our body. Maari iba po sa amin, Panginoon, are in great need. We pray for your provision, O God. Supply the needs of your people. Maybe some of us, Lord, ay may mga anxiety and worry. May mga pinagdaraanan. Meron struggle and crisis. We pray for your strength. We pray for your grace, O oh God. Maybe some of us, Lord, ay nasa mga sitwasyon na alanganin. Masumpungan po namin ang pag-iingat at pag-ingat. May mga pagbabala kami. May mga gagawin kami mga pagpaplano. Kami ay pagkalooban mo ng karanungan na nagbubula po sa inyo. Ikaw na nakikinig at nakakapanood sa mga sandaling ito, patuloy mong kilalangin si Kristo sa iyong buhay. Isuko mo ang iyong buhay sa Kanya upang magkagayon, ikaw ay magkaroon ng kalayaan na ipagkakalog sa iyo ng ating Panginoon na sa Kristo. As we depart from this place, as we end up our Sunday service, O God, your troubling mercy be upon us, O God. Your protection in our houses continually be experienced, O Lord. And as we face another week in our lives, crown all our efforts with success, lead and guide our work, our ministry, our studies, our businesses, O God, Your grace abounds, Lord, in our life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you again next.